Hey you guys, this is Elias with Softly and today I want to showcase for you our Jet Engine import add-on. Now, if you're using Jet Engine to handle your post types and custom fields, well, you will be able to import data to those custom fields using WPL import. Now, let's get on with that and I'm going to blast through uh, an import real quick so we can focus on the actual Jet Engine fields. So I'm going to select properties from this pull down because this is the post type we created uh, with Jet Engine. So I'm going to continue to step two. And here, since this file is looking good, this is the actual data we have. So I'm going to continue to step three. All right. And here on step three, I'm going to drag and drop the values from the right panel into the uh, fields I want those values to go. Now this is the description. So I'm going to place that here. Here we have the images. So I'm going to find that uh, right here. I want to use the image featured element because I want to use this gallery one uh, in the import fields. Now I'm going to continue with my import. These settings, I'm going to leave them as they are. But if you want to know more about them, you can just hover on this question mark. All right. And now here in the Jet Engine add on section, I'm going to enable this properties post type option because this uh, is the group field we're going to use. All right. So we have several fields here. For example, these two are simple text fields. So I'm just going to drag and drop the data like so, map address and short address. Cool. And here for the date first listed, I have my element uh, right here. Here it is. Cool. Now, guys, you could select a value from here and WPL import will assign that value to all 105 properties. Or you can uh, do as I just did, uh, drag and drop a value with a date and WPL import will use the str to time function to translate from your time format to whatever uh, Jet Engine is using to uh, handle your data, right? So uh, here for the availability field, we could select a value from here, same as with the date, but that will mean that all of the 105 properties will have the same value. And we don't want that because each one of these properties have a different availability. So I'm going to drag and drop that value like so using expat and guys if you don't know what expat is don't worry about it you don't need to know that to use wpl import uh, now if you do know what expat is then you know you can do all sorts of crazy stuff here now if you want to know more about that though uh, you can just go to our website at wplimport.com and from there click on the docs menu and go nuts there now uh, let's just continue with our import i'm going to drag and drop the price here and here for the amenities, we have a very similar situation where we can select some values from here and WPL import will place all of these values in these properties. But again, we don't want that because what if we check this pool and some of these properties don't have a pool, right? So uh, we're going to set this with expat. And if you hover on the question mark, uh, it will give you some instructions uh, for expat. Now, in this case, when we're going to import multiple values, uh, it says we should do it separating them uh, with commas. So this is our amenities field, right? And all of these elements are separated with commas. So this works for us. I'm going to uh, drag and drop that. Cool. And then here for the square feet, same bathrooms, same. Then bedrooms, right? Cool. Now guys, here we have this rooms element. Now I want to show you how this actually looks here when we create a new property. All right. So we have here our, our map address, short address, and all of the fields we already set up, all right? This is a time picker. Now here is our amenities and here is the square feet, bathrooms and bedrooms. And here is our rooms field. Now guys, this rooms field is a repeater field. Now you can see we can add as many sub items as we want and Jet Engine will just continue adding them up. Now, this has three subfields inside of them. So we're gonna import data to those fields, right? Using the Jet Engine add-on. Now, for CSV, we have two ways of importing this data. The first one is the fixed mode. And this fixed mode is good when you have a fixed number of elements in your import file that you need to import. For example, say you only have three rooms per property. So you add here three rows and add all of the data inside each one of these rows, right? And that will get it imported. That will mean the same as if you have here one, two, and three repeating elements, right? 
and delete this. Cool. Now here we only have three, and that will be the case if we had a fixed number of uh, rooms per property. However, here we have a variable number of rooms per property. Now here is the entrance hallway, kitchen diner, and living room, and all of these are separated with pipes. So this entrance hallway, right, has these measurements, and this is the description for that room. Same with the second one, and so on and so forth. So this one has three rooms, and this second property has like six, seven uh, rooms. So it has a variable number of rooms per property. Now, the way we import this is selecting here the variable CSV mode. We need to check that we're using the same uh, delimiter here, right? So if your file is using another kind of symbol to separate each element, you need to change that here. Now, this is not the case. We're using a pipe. So I'm going to drag and drop the name here, the measurement here, and the description here. And I'm going to enable this option that says ignore blank fields. And if I hover on the question mark, it says if the value of the element or column in your file is blank, it will be ignored. Use this option when some records in your file have a different number of repeating elements than others. So this is our case. So I want this option. And all of this is looking good, so I'm going to continue. Now here's the gallery field. And our data is here, so I'm going to drag and drop that. And if I zoom in here, you can see that all of my image URLs are separated with pipes. So I'm going to use that same element here, right? And when enable this option that says search to the media library for existing images before importing new images. And what this will do is, well, basically when WP import is about to download an image, it will check whether the image already exists in our media library. And if it does, then it won't download that uh, new image, but it will use the existing one. Now that's pretty neat, uh, because we don't want to end up with a bunch of duplicate images uh, in our site, so this is always a good feature to have enabled. Now in this example, I don't think we're gonna uh, end up with a lot of duplicate images, but I'm just gonna leave it like that, just in case. Now I'm gonna do the same with the floor plan, and this is a media um, field, you can see that here right here this is our gallery and here is our floor plan cool now guys uh finally we have this contact tab and here we have four uh, simple text fields i'm gonna add those like so right and with this we have everything ready with the jet engine add-on now uh, i'm gonna scroll down a little bit and add the taxonomies real quick all right, here we have our tenure, so I'm going to drag and drop that. Cool. And the property of the week. Now, this property of the week uses yes and no uh, for the values, but here in our import file, we have ones and zeros. We need to enable the mapping for the property of the week. I'm going to drag and drop the value here, and I'm going to add a new column. So I'm going to say uh, if in my file it says one, I'm going to translate that to yes. And if in my file it says zero, I'm going to translate that to no. Cool. Now we're ready here. So let's just continue to step four. And then I'm going to click here on the auto attack button because I don't want to overthink too much about this uh, unique identifier. You can just click on this button and WPL import will take care of that for you. These settings, I'm going to leave them as they are, but you can hover on the question mark if you have uh, some questions about what they do. And finally, we have these scheduling options, which uh, you can learn more from in our website at wpleport.com or checking out the other videos in our channel. Now, let's just continue and run this import. Now, it's going to take a minute or two, so I'm just going to pause the video here and come back when it's ready. All right, guys, so the import is finished importing our jet engine fields, so let's check those properties out. And there you go, we have here 105 properties, which is great. This is the number of properties we expected. So uh, let's check this one out and see what's going on here. So uh, we have some images, so this is cool. And all of the other fields seem to be here. The amenities are here. Bedroom, bathrooms, uh, the rooms repeater is here too, so that's great. Now here for the property of the week, uh, we don't have uh, ones and zeros, we have yes and no, which is cool because the mapping worked. Here we have our featured image. And the other tabs are good too. And here on the front end, you can see all of the data is here too. So this is great. 
Uh, and that's it, guys. There you have it. It's that easy to import your jet engine custom fields using WPL import and the jet engine import add-on. Now, if you want to get this add-on, just go to our website at wplimport.com. And if you have any questions at all, just contact our support team and we will be more than happy to help you out. For now, just thank you for watching and see you next time.